Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to the Geek Group. For our Halloween special this year, we've got the Great Pumpkin. This, <laughs> I didn't name it. This is actually a donation from our very own Mr. Minkus. And it's an old welder. I don't even know who made it. Oh, well here, it's a P&H AC arc welder. The model is a TWI-200. And this, this looks to have a couple years on it. It's been well loved and abused over many years. And I'm interested in it because this old welder has a big crank on top. And that means it has variable in, uh, a variable inductor, which we can use as a variable current limiter. And this could have some value in the high voltage lab. So I was like, don't just, don't just scrap that. We can make things out of it, man. So. We're gonna autopsy it down here a bit and see if we can extract the big variable inductor current limiter. So that's our primary goal. And to do that, we're just gonna start popping some parts off and see where we end up. Let's start by taking the uh, big handles off the side. Now this has like 15 coats of paint on it. So nothing's gonna come without a fight. Okay, now I wanna give that a little bit of a turn. and then break it off. Now I want you all, everybody out there judging me for my ineptitude with hand tools, please remember, I do electrical work. I am not by any means a mechanic and do not for a moment profess to have any kind of mechanic skill set. But that actually worked. I think they painted this every year. Okay, that's off. It turns really easy, which I'm quietly thankful for. It's at that really terrible spot where it's too easy to use a wrench for and too hard to do by hand. And there's so much stuff in here. Don't need all, oh, that's handy. It's a little bit big for what I'm doing, but it might work. Can I just bend this out of the way? Is that even remotely possible? Oh yeah, oh, that makes things so much easier. Ah, there. While I'm at it, I'll do this side too. Ah, there, oh, that's, that's world's better. Now the reason I'm taking the handles off first is because there really isn't a lot to this, like from the outside, and I don't know if the handles are anchoring something internally or not, and it's very likely they are. especially since they use two rather large bolts. If you can see the size of those bolts they use just to hold that handle on, probably not. They're probably holding something else, like holding the, the main body panels together. And the, to get the body panels off, I've got two screws here, so this piece has to come off, which is why I'm starting with these. Ah, well, this side's in better shape. Now I'm gonna lever that off.
And I'm seeing the whole side panel come out as I do this. And then just wiggle it off. There we go. Now I have to pull on the bolt a little bit. You'll probably hear something fall on the inside when this comes out. Yeah, there's, there's something in there. Okay, so we've got that. This one's gonna be tricky. I've got a nut recessed in the top. Looks like about 11 sixteenths. Can I get down to the nut? Well, this is tricky because there's a nut in there. You can see the, or well, bolt. There's a bolt on top here. Yeah, it might be a nut. And I have to get to it to take the handle off. But there's kind of a recess surround around the thing. Yeah, it comes straight off. That's the only way to do it. Hmm, maybe we can get in there with these. The biggest handicap on this project is just lots of age and grime and paint. So if you're doing, with, if you're dealing with straight blade screws, you can put a screwdriver in the groove on one end like this and just gently tap like that. You've seen me do this in autopsies before on really old manky gear. I don't know how much this is actually gonna get us because I think all it's gonna do is let me take off this little plate here, but I can't probably can't actually get the plate out. No, oh, we'll have to see. Yep. Let's get a beefier, angrier screwdriver in here. See if I can lever this around. Because the, the handle's loose but it's tight on these two faces here. And if I can open this up a little bit, I might be able to get a socket in there. Will that work? Oh, hey. Hey, I think, I think that actually did it. I didn't think that worked. I have no idea how I'm gonna be able to hold one and lever it against the other. Oh, that's the easiest thing ever, isn't it? Hey, Batman, can you come to high voltage a moment? Batman to high voltage real quick. I need you please to grab that and don't let it move. Okay? You right? Yeah. Okay. Ah! Oh. You're almost there. Oh, we're making progress. Thank you, sir. Well, I got the nut off.
Thank you, Archimedes. All right, so we don't need that. We're gonna need this later. So, now we're into the fun stuff. I'm gonna pop off these two bolts down here. So much rust just falling out of this thing as I do this. And then we'll try on this side. Oh. Ah. Ah. Ah, it ain't coming. See, these are gunged up with a pretty high level of schmoo. Let's grab our little screwdriver and try cleaning these out. See if that'll help. Ooh, big slug out of there. Try this one too. is in there very tight. <sighs> that is not fun, even a little bit. Let's try this side, see what we get. Ah! I think this thing sat in water for a few years or something. How big a straight blade you got in there? Oh, that's tiny. That's the biggest I got for bits. All right, here, take that. See if you can get that out. I'll work on the back ones. That's oh, way too small, but I'll see if it works. Yeah, these aren't nearly as bad as those. Oh, I hate you, I almost killed myself trying to get that thing around one turn. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> you got it, an adjustable wrench up here, didn't you? Yeah, what do you need that for? Because, you know, this thing is square. Well, the, uh... Tip it back. Grab here, pull that way. <laughs> Want it actually all the way down? No, but just, reason, just enough. Yeah, that's not enough. Hang on.
I'm gonna try these. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna try them. Try that one I've got most of. All right. See if come out. Tip it. It just exploded. Let me try this side. Oh, we got that one. That should be enough. Thank you, sir. You know. There's something here bonding these two panels together. I think. I've take that off too. These are the output terminals here. I think if I take all these screws out, especially the ones that we took out around the bottom, this whole top might slide right off. I'm not certain about it, but that's my guess, is we take enough screws out and the whole top will slide right off the top. And then we're right in there. I wonder if P&H is the same as uh, P&H mining. So, this is an amperage indicator here on front. And because this won't be on here when we're done, it's probably an important thing for us to make a note of right now that there's the high side and the low side. And on the high side, we have 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, 250, I'm gonna say that's 285, maybe a 265 there. On this side, we have 20, 50, 75, 100, 125 here. So 
So there's our on and off switch here. So we're not going to need that. We'll just cut that right out. All right, so now we can see inside it and you can see we've got our big, our big screw here, our, our big Acme screw and that's, that's what this lever actuates. And that appears to move this up and down. This is a moving coil and down below is a stationary coil. And then there's this big laminated core. There's, there's an outer core and an inner core. You can probably see it on either side. So it's really cool looking and very, very simple. So I think we might actually be able to use this. I'm, I'm kind of excited. The trick is, can we get the thing off? Which will not be easy. So, yeah. Let's see if we can move it a little. I don't know what's holding it on. But I know how to give it a lift and find out. All right, let's see if this works. Now, all we're grabbing by is the outer metal frame. because I can't see anywhere that that is attached anymore. Yeah, nothing on the bottom. If this doesn't work, my next solution is basically beat the hell out of it and see what happens. So let's see if this works at all. I have doubts. See, that's under a lot of tension, so I don't want to do anything crazy around this. Took a wheel off. Now, this isn't bolted at the bottom anymore. There's nothing attaching it there. And there's a giant heavy iron core inside, and this whole thin shell's just kind of hanging on that. I don't see. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens. Worst that'll happen is it falls over. That did not have the desired results. It's entirely possible that there's nothing but rust holding this on. Let's knock it over and see what we see. Ah! Yeah, there's nothing on the bottom except that one screw that we couldn't get out. And an inappropriately placed nail. Remember the screw we broke? There are, oh, there's a set of nails here. And the nails are wedged in. Holding the feet. So we gotta get this one screw out. Or, well, we don't have to get it off. We could break it off and be okay. All right, so we know that there's no secret hidden bolts or anything down here. Ah! That was fun. So I gotta get that bolt off. Ah! But just that one.
I could do this with an angle grinder in a few seconds, but it'd take me. Maybe I can get lucky enough. want to be facing that when it goes off. Ah! If the metal is old enough and rusted enough and manky enough. No, I'm not going to twist my way around that. Hey, Batman. Big yellow crowbar, please, quickly. That did it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, look at how easily that happens now. Batman, sir, can you help me stand this up? I just had to tear the head through that bolt. Now, there should be a couple wires on the back still attached, but yeah, it's mobile now. All right, I can reach through here. Okay, try lifting that off, it should go. Yeah! Victory! Oh, now grab the little handle. Thank you, sir. And if we put this, Oh, I'm not going to worry about the nut for now. But now you can see there's the mobile core and the stationary core. And by changing the gap between them, that changes how their lines of magnetic flux interact, and it changes the inductance between the two. And we can use this as variable current limiting. So I see there's three big wires here that come off the center core. These are the wires for the lower core. OK, so this is input power, and this is output. That's cool. We might, I'm not entirely sure, and it'd be, it'd be grounds for some really cool experimentation, we might be able to take which it, we, we got to do a lot of measurements and work out the inductances and stuff. But it's entirely possible that we might be able to put a DC voltage through here and use this in series as inductive ballast and make a really interesting saturable core reactor out of this. Huh. That's something we're thinking about. But the first thing I have to do is completely restore this. So this is where it all begins with big, old, ugly welder 
And that gives you your terrifying video for Halloween of the Great Pumpkin. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Do not attempt to use tools in any manner that you saw me. You have to use them for this. Screwdrivers are not pry bars or chisels. Don't do that to any screwdriver that you appreciate. Um, wear safety glasses. Make sure your mom holds your hand. And you know, always wear at least three protective layers of latex before engaging in any activity involving hand tools. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time. If you've only seen our videos, then you've only seen the smallest fraction of what the Geek Group is. It's a place where you can craft, improve on, manufacture, repair, rediscover, test, discuss, research, and share just about any project in a one-of-a-kind massive facility with tools and equipment you might otherwise never get the chance to touch, let alone use for your own projects. The Geek Group is a learning institution. We're people with different skills, backgrounds, and perspectives, figuring out how to make ideas a reality and sharing those insights with everyone. To help you along the way and to get help from you are tens of thousands of members from around the world connected to the lab in real time through internet relay chat and live streaming video. A single-minded appetite for knowledge and a drive to create are traits common to all geeks. We found a way to amplify those traits, a way to give you the resources you need to improve lives. Get involved at thegeekgroup.org. We thank the Future Girl Foundation for the grant that made these videos possible. GIMS! And the thousands upon thousands of purchases and private donations from members and viewers like you that keep this place running. Thank you.